Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hello. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. This is the Planning and Land Use Management Committee. I, we will call this meeting to order. I'm Councilmember Weezer. I've been joined by Councilmember Harris Dawson and Councilmember Price. We will now take up the uh, multiple item speaker cards. This is an agenda item for those individuals who have chosen to speak on more than one item. We have no one on the, um, do we have anyone on the multiple agenda item? Oh, there they are, okay. Noel Weiss. Okay. okay. How much time do I have, sir? If two minutes. Two minutes? I got three items. Yes, it's two minutes. Even if you sign up for three items, that's the item. I just get two minutes for three items? Yeah. Okay. That's the rules. Me... Hey, you know, they can change. Yeah. But not today. Okay. <laughs> get to, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Anyway, going forward, when I hit a minute, oh, please give me two. Okay. All right. Okay. Go right um, ahead. Number one, I had the privilege of speaking with the chairman of this committee last couple of at the end of the last meeting about the an idea that I had promulgated at uh, ten, at the um, uh, at public comment um, relative to the need to have a tenant relocation plan to protect the tenants middle class lower middle class tenants that are displaced involuntarily as a result of development now some of the developers may not want to do deal with tenants anymore but we got a relocation law we got an Ellis law we have some unscrupulous developers and and I had kind of an informal arrangement with Michael Lagrande along these lines but honestly it would really help predictability for all concerned to make sure that the tenants are protected in, in the context of these developments so the motion that I presented and I passed it around and I gave it to Mr. Weezar and frankly I don't want to hold him to his promise but he said he'd take a serious look at it okay the bottom line is uh, we need to have a protocol in place so that when they submit their application, they also are telling planning and they're telling the community, this is how we're going to take care of the tenants. Okay? That's my public comment on that. Number two, the 100-foot issue. I guess we're talking about a 100-feet notification. Um, I guess if you guys had your way, it'd be zero. But the bottom line is, you got 500 feet for everybody else. Um, there are people, there are circumstances. Why is 100 feet reasonable? I don't think it should be 500 feet at a minimum because... Um, it's important, particularly in this day and age, when it doesn't seem like the council is as interested as it needs to be in alternative points of view anymore, um, to have the 500 foot, so at least you're in a position to have alternative points of view so that you can then reconcile the conflicting legal and political and practical interests that exist relative to these situations. You guys make policy. It's really hard um, to do so under these circumstances. So my suggestion is respectfully, if we can go 500 feet, that would be terrific. Thank you Great. for the two minutes. Boy, am I grateful. Great. Thank you very much. Herman? What is the ongoing development of city planning policy work programs, operations, and other items of interest. That's item number one. That is how the council may change the policy when the interim ordinance is adopted and require like for like replacement of affordable existing residential unit occupied by a very low income household shall be replaced with an affordable replacement unit affordable to very low income household so let's cut all the jargon bullshit and just get to the point there is no fucking affordable housing in los angeles there is no hhh affordable housing in the state of california however there is new housing development and yet white niggers from plum keep you and I out of homes. You're going to hear multiple complaints as to why the Mallow Act along the coast where you're taking away our homes 
in replace of brand new homes is not affordable housing, like for like. And then on item 20, none other than Jose Weiser has determined a public convenience of necessity filed by Lawn School. Well, fuck Lawn School. We want more drinking and alcohol in Los Angeles because we like the fact that there are more hit and runs in a local area such as in Los Angeles, such as when Jose Weizar rear end a car during his DUI. So let's push for rule on item 22, more alcohol, more rape, and let's keep fucking America. Wayne. So go ahead, her. Yes, so good evening to the puppet show, yes. So item number one, fuck item number one. We don't want Mr. Rigatoni Bertoni's fucking report. It says the same thing. Boo, 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 boo. I'm going to give you affordable housing. Bullshit. Boo, 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 boo. I'm going to bring rents down. Bullshit. Boop, 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 I'm gonna create jobs. Bullshit. Yes, it's a total bullshit report, and he's laughing, making his two hundred thousand dollars a year. Congratulations. Then number three, we have Yvette Lopez Ledesma, who has unfortunately decided to sacrifice herself to the North Valley Planning Commission. You will see the puppet here at that planning commission, Miss Lopez at least two times a month, so you may want to reconsider. I suggest you withdraw the appointment while you still have the chance to experience puppet comment versus the normal public comment that the bald-headed fuck Jose Weezer Institute here. Then we have the Los Angeles City Planning Commission, Karen Mack, like a Mack truck. She's going to drive herself into this commission and give us all rent-controlled housing for every item put in the market since January 1st, 1990, right? Psych! <laughs> I goddamn tricked you all again. There never will be affordable housing in the city because the developers own everybody on the council, they own the mayor, they own the regulatory agencies, they own the city attorney, Developers own everybody except my friend here, Mr. Spinner, who paid off the Jews to the bank in 2008. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, fuck everybody and fuck Mitchell Farrell, that cocksucker. Thank you. I think that concludes the multiple item speaker cards. We will now move on to the consent items. Item number two has a, num a couple of speakers. We'll hold that. Item number three, we will approve on consent without objection. Item number five, we will approve on consent without objection. Item number six, we, will, uh, we have one card. We will hold that item. Item number 13, Approve on consent without objection. Item number 14, approve on consent without objection. Item number 16, we will continue to May 22nd with no objection. Item number 18, we have one card, we will hold that. Item number 19, we will approve on consent with no objection. Item number 20, we will continue to a date uncertain. Item 20, we will continue. Item 21, we will approve on consent, no objection. Item 22, approve on, we have two cards, we'll hold that. Item 23, we will approve on consent with no objection. Okay. Is 
So let's go back to item number two. If we could call that to order, please. Mm -hmm. Item two, Councilman, this is a motion. Wesson Ryu, it's uh, instructing the city planning department along with the city attorney to prepare an ordinance relative to the transit-oriented communities affordable housing guidelines. We have two public speakers on this card. We'll just do the public speaking on this. We don't need the um, planning presentation on this. Doug Haynes and Keith. Good afternoon. Hi, my name is Doug Haynes. I'm with both East Hollywood Neighborhood Council and Hollywood Studio District Neighborhood Council. And we've kind of become ground zero for these TOC projects. I provided for you some illustrations of the renderings of what we're getting in, which are these massive projects that really overwhelm the lots. What's happening is because TOC projects have no notice, no hearings, no opportunity for most people to even appeal them if they even are aware of the project, um, we're losing historic Hollywood at a, a rapid rate. The incentives the City Planning Commission passed go well beyond the language of Measure JJJ. Due to this, the, uh, the wave of evictions, particularly from single family homes that do not have rent control, I'm seeing a lot of people who have been in these homes for decades being pushed out with little notice. Speculators have driven up the costs of these homes from approximately $750,000 last year to now we're seeing prices of $1.3, $1.4 million um, that are being offered and it's a snowball effect and they're really decimating our community. So thank you. I hope the notification will be widespread more than just 100 feet to the entire neighborhood and try to put in some hearing process also. Thank you. Thank you. Keith? <clears throat> Yep, I'm also advocating for a wider, uh, a wider net to be cast at least 500 feet. Um, we have a lot of people I'm in CD13. I'm also on a neighborhood council. We have a lot, a lot of public input in our council coming in, opposing uh, certain parts of the TOC guidelines, opposing certain parts of these developments that come into the neighborhoods, overwhelm the neighborhoods with noise, traffic. There's a lot of concern, and we need to have as much public process, especially at this time, as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, we'll move this item and approve it. Without objection. Item number six. Item six, Councilman. This is a report from the City Planning Commission. It's a vesting zone change, a high district change. Uh, it's for a mixed use project located in CD4 containing affordable units. Okay, there are, are no speakers on this. There just there was one just a moment. Was it removed? Yeah, I had a speaker listed. Leron Gubler. Leron Gubler here? No? Okay, we were uh, moved this item without objection. Item number 18. Item 18, Councilman, this is a public convenience or necess necessity item filed by Charles Kelly. Uh, the property is located in CD5, the Beverly Center Mobile. Okay, Gavin here, is there a Gavin? Gavin McCurian, yes. We had heard from the council office earlier today that they were going to ask to continue this to the uh, next meeting, and the uh, applicant is uh, is accepting of that. So, is Council District Five here? We were recommended by Council District Five. Uh, we are going to move this without recommendation. That's the. Re oh, okay. We'll move it without recommendation to full council. So, all right. That's the action that we propose. So. Okay. Well, I'll reserve my comment for. Okay. So we're moving this item to council without recommendation. Any objection? Seeing none, so ordered. Item number 20, we've continued, right, to a date uncertain. That's right. right. Item 22. Item 22, councilman, this is uh, again a public convenience or necessity application filed by Mark Siegel. Uh, Property is located in CD4. Bukarski's Los Feliz. 
Okay, the speaker has withdrawn their speaking card, so we will move this item without objection. Okay, now we will go to item number one, report from the Director of Planning, Mr. Bertoni. Thank you, Chair Weezar and members of the committee. Vince Bertoni, Director of Planning. Just a few things. Uh, first off is we completed our Planning 101 trainings that, these are the trainings that, that, that the City Planning Department hosted throughout the City of Los Angeles. We had them in seven different locations, um, each within the boundaries of our seven area planning commissions. And we hosted seven trainings over four weeks, and we had over 450 community members attend. They were very, very well, very successful. And we really focused on project planning, and we had some of our more experienced and high-level uh, staffers there. We had our deputy directors there, principal planners and senior planners to really describe what the development process and, and the planning process for a development project is like in the city of Los Angeles. Um, this was, last year we did a series of six throughout the city that focused on policy planning, um, and we uh, plan on doing these again in the future. And also, um, along the same lines, we had, last Friday, we had a training for our design review board members, and this is something that I don't know that the city has done um, in the past, if ever, it's, if, it's, if we've done it, it's been a very long time. So we hosted it in the Valley, at the Browdy Center, and we had the, the various de design review chairs and vice chairs there um, talking about their roles as well as members of the, the various design review committees. Again, we had very high level planners throughout, the, throughout our department to really work with the design review board members to help them kind of understand the roles and to be able to, to better, um, to really better operate in, in terms of their, their committee meetings. So again, this is part of our overall process to really op open up kind of what we do in, in the Department of Planning to make it more clear. Um, to everyone and, and more open and accessible. So with that, that concludes my report and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, any questions? Thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Bertoni, for your presentation. We will note and file the item without objection. Let's move to item 17. <clears throat> item 17, Councilman, this is an appeal filed by Michael Ohana. Uh, this is as it relates to the construction of a 200-room hotel uh, located in CD1. Okay. Welcome. Thank you. Yes, uh, good afternoon, Henry Chu, the Planning Department. So this is uh, an environmental clearance appeal related to the adaptive reuse of a five-story building with three-story parking structure. The appellant uh, claims that the categorical class 32 is not appropriate and that there should be mitigation measures incorporated. Uh, staff reviewed the project and determined that the class 32 was in conformance with section 15332 of the CEQA guidelines. And uh, staff also requested that the applicant submit a noise study and the noise study showed that there would be no significant impact, a less than significant impact uh, to any uh, abutting uses. And the appellant hasn't submitted any additional uh, study to counter that. So uh, staff recommends that the uh, Plum Committee uh, deny the appeal. Okay, great, thank you. The applicant, uh, Elizabeth Peterson. Uh, good afternoon, council members. Uh, Elizabeth Peterson, representing the Bricks Hotel. It's a new adaptive reuse business-oriented hotel at 1543 West Olympic Boulevard. Uh, the project will bring new life to this mid-century 1965 office building and help revitalize the streetscape on Olympic Boulevard corridor that is very blighted presently. Um, the, uh, zoning Administrator Chu uh, is correct. It's consistent with the general plan and zoning designation. Occurs within the city limits on a project site surrounded by urban uses. The site has no value as a habitat for endangered or threatened species, and the appro approval will not result in any uh, significant traffic, noise, air quality, or water quality. The site can adequately serve all of the required utilities and public services. We have full support of the Los Angeles Police Department. The adaptive reuse project will enhance the surrounding community by removing the current signs of blight, such as graffiti, broken windows, and restore a sense of safety to the corner. We're adjacent to school, and the school is very desirous of us being there. Um, it's going to create a 24-hour community, and uh, will establish that it meets all of the policy goals of increasing employment and opportunities, creating a 24-hour community. Uh, we do respectfully request that you sustain the Zoning Administrator and the Area Planning Commission's uh, decisions. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. 
Gerald Gubatan from Council District 1. Gerald Gubatan, Council Member of Gilsadio's office. The Council Office urges the committee to deny the appeal. Okay, thank you. So with that, we'll move to deny the appeal. The appellant here. The appellant here. Uh, Mike. They didn't sign up. Oh, so they didn't? I'm, okay. Yeah. Okay. The appellant uh, was not here, for the record. So I'll move to deny the appeal. Okay. Any objections? Seeing none, so ordered. Item number four. Um, item four, Councilman, this is a communication from the mayor relative to the appointment of Ms. Karen Mack to the LA City Planning Commission. Okay. Ms. Mack here. Welcome, Ms. Mack, and if you want to share with the committee uh, your interest in serving on this commission. Thank you so much for having me, esteemed council members. Um, it's my honor to um, be the mayor's choice for um, this seat on the planning commission. And it's also very humbling because I am taking the seat of the great John Mack. I had the opportunity to go and um, uh, to his send-off last week at the Planning Commission, and um, I can only hope to maybe even fill one of his shoes. Um, what I appreciated about being there was just hearing about his contributions as part of the commission, and it... Um, you know, I, I actually decided to do this because it was the opportunity to follow in his footsteps. And what I learned was that we really share a lot. And my being there will be a through line in terms of uh, advocacy for the community as part of that body. My work at LA Commons, an organization I founded, um, almost 20 years ago now, amazingly, is really about giving voice to the community, using the tool of art and culture as a vehicle to do that. And in our work, we really value um, empowerment and equity and uh, bringing people from throughout Los Angeles into the civic processes. One of the projects we're working on is a cultural asset mapping project as part of the Promise Zone, really thinking about art and culture as a strategy for economic development, given the diversity of that area and the opportunity to celebrate all of those cultures. I'm also working um, with Metro and um, the community leaders in Hyde Park on a creative placemaking project, um, which I know all of you, the three people here today really understand creative placemaking maybe more than any of the other council people. And I really like to think about it as placekeeping because you know our work is really about um, asserting the identity of the folks in those neighborhoods in the public realm and supporting them in uh, this idea of this is my place and I'm important and I have a story to tell. And so I'm, I feel, um, and it was a tough decision to take on this massive role of being a planning commissioner, but I feel like given my interest in community and this cultural lens, which we don't necessarily think enough about, I mean, cities have cultural infrastructures and social infrastructures, and so I value those, and I feel like that is a perspective that I'll bring to the commission. And it's, those are important perspectives because one of Los Angeles' great gifts is the culture of the people who live here. And given what's happening now, we are challenged to really think about how do we preserve that culture so that the story we tell about ourselves now is a story that we'll be able to tell, say, 10 years when the Olympics come to Los Angeles. 
So, um, so I'm very, um, I, I hesitate to say excited, but I'm looking forward to um, playing a role in this very significant body um, to help to make Los Angeles the place that we all want it to be. Well, thank you, and thank you for your willingness to serve, and I am excited that you will be serving on this commission. I think your background, intuition, and experience is going to add to it, and certainly this commission um, has a lot to say about the future, future shape of the city, a shape in many forms, so uh, I thank you for your willingness to serve on this and giving of your time. Mr. Price. I think the uh, mayor made an excellent selection uh, in, uh, in selecting Ms. Mack. We certainly know of her uh, commitment to this community <clears throat> through her work, uh, as, she, as she referenced, uh, through the art and culture and the intersection of, of, of all things, and uh, its role as a tool for economic development. So we, we just appreciate that. So we're excited that, uh, that you'll be joining the, uh, the commission. We know you'll be making some... Uh, important contributions, and we look forward to working with you in this capacity also. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Th thumbs up from Mr. Harris Dawson. Mm -hmm. So, Well, thank you very much. In this item, will move to full council, the mayor's office, and the clerk's office will guide you through that process. So thank you very much. Thank you. Right, we'll move this item without objection. Yep, so ordered. Thank you. Okay, now we will move to items seven, eight, and nine. We'll take those all together. Okay. Um, item seven, Councilman, they're all interrelated as it relates to the Lightstone project in your district. Item seven is the uh, CPC recommended science supplemental use district. Item eight is the proposed development agreement and the terms therein. And item nine is the resolution, GPA, and zone change for the project. Thank you. Colleagues, uh, I want to first thank everyone who has brought us to this point in this very important project. I want to thank in particular the city planning staff and the city attorney's office for a remarkable job in particularly getting all the documents together for this committee meeting. Um, and also, as many of you know, uh, this project is important in many respects, but one of them is that it provides much needed hotel rooms around our convention center. Um, our uh, office, along with others, initiated a study that showed uh, the need to get closer to our goal of 8,000 rooms within half mile of the convention center by 2020. Uh, this project will add 1,100 rooms that would continue to uh, allow us to be competitive in the tourism market and also to continue to provide the economic activity in the area. Um, so I want to also thank the applicant who was willing to uh, go through this process that combines city-owned property along with some private property uh, to make uh, for a better project. Um, and before us today are the items that will continue to move this project forward. Uh, and I want to um, acknowledge um, the, uh, the work that uh, the CLA did as well uh, in coming up with um, some strategic um, ways in which we could uh, make this project happen. So thank you very much. Uh, with that, I will call the staff to come up and make a short presentation, please. Good afternoon. My name is Milena Zasajin. I'm with the Department of City Planning. I'm here to present the Fig and Pico project, which encompasses over half a million square feet of development in two high-rise towers on a key acre site in downtown, strategically located between the Convention Center and the Metro Pico station. The project seats a general plan amendment, zone change, sign district, and development agreement. The City Planning Commission recommended approval of the project and the three entitlements on March 29, 2018. The project was appealed by the applicant in all three cases, requesting changes. However, two of the appeals were invalid, and the City Council does not have the authority to act on those appeals. The remaining appeal was withdrawn by the applicant, and the appeal period was reopened and closed again on May 10th, with no new appeals filed. So to be clear for the record, there are no project appeals that are being considered today. 
On May 10th, the applicant submitted a number of requested changes to the project conditions and all three entitlements. For the zone change, the applicant's two changes on the queue conditions are still consistent with the commission uh, actions, and we have no objections and recommend approval of the zone change and general plan amendment. For the development agreement, the applicant requests a number of changes that need to be re reviewed by the city attorney and city planning as to form and legality. It is also not clear what types of signs would qualify under their sign takedown program or if this applies to billboards, so we'd like to request clarification on that item and otherwise recommend approval of the development agreement. For the sign ordinance, again, the applicant has a number of changes that differ from the commission's recommendations that are inconsistent with the city's pattern and practice. We recommend that the changes are reviewed under more careful consideration by the city attorney and city planning. Also, the following three items conflict with our city standards and procedures um, regarding city planning review, new sign types, and sign illumination. So the applicant's changes to the city planning review procedures for signage are inconsistent with the standards of other city uh, sign districts in the Los Angeles Municipal Code. The applicant also introduces new sign types, previously not analyzed, uh, including animated signs, aerial view signs, inflatable signs, pole signs, and off-site signs throughout the district. So we request clarification that those be more carefully looked at. The applicant um, recommendations for illumination review and standards for the project remove municipal code protections for the nearby residents on the south side of Pico and have no restrictions on the hours of operations, which is inconsistent with the adjacent lay said. So we respectfully request that um, there be a more careful review of, the, of those specific items within the sign district by the city attorney and planning prior to the return of the sign district to the Plum subcommittee. And that concludes our presentation. Thank you very much. And uh, before we continue, I, I believe my staff has circulated uh, a number of uh, changes to uh, the queue conditions, the development agreement, and the sign district uh, that we'd like to incorporate as part of the amendments that we're making today. Did we circulate those? Sean, did we circulate the amendments? Okay, so those have been circulated. The clerk, you have a clerk doesn't have them. Okay, the clerk needs to have them, please. And the city attorney and CLA, you guys are okay? Okay, good. All right, so we have those circulated and we'll continue with public comment first as we do with these cases, have the applicant uh, present. I understand you requested 10 minutes in total. Okay, welcome. Good afternoon, council members. Uh, my name is Mitchell Hochberg. I'm the president of Lightstone Group, the applicant for the Fig and Pico Conference Center Hotels project that is before you today. We appreciate the opportunity to present this project to you. Lightstone is the one of the country's largest and most diversified privately held real estate companies. We are active in more than 20 states and we have built our reputation on developing projects in major cities that satisfy both the needs of the community, our guests, tenants, and residents. In New York, we have recently completed several mixed-use hotel developments that meet the needs of residents and visitors alike. We recently won the prestigious Development Project of the Year Award for our Moxie Times Square project, and we are committed to bringing the next Project of the Year right here to downtown LA. The Fig and Pico project is located on the doorstep of the convention center and will become a key hotel resource for conventions, tourists, and residents alike. It also helps the city satisfy its goal of 8,000 hotel rooms within walking distance of the convention center. We are excited to deliver this world-class project and help the city redevelop this important location. Thank you for your time. Now our land use attorney, Jim Pugh, will present the project. Thanks, Mitch. Um, I'll present the PowerPoint before you uh, today and clarify some issues. I'll try and wrap up before our time has expired, and if you have questions during deliberation, we're here to answer any of those. So what you'll see today is some urban context, the location of the site, project characteristics, the applicant request, I'll focus on those, and then show you some before and after 
voters, which I think will really put this in perspective and close with uh, the critical actions we're asking for Plum to make today. The context of the site, as you all know, the city needs more convention hotels. This project will bring over 1,000 rooms into walking distance across the street from the convention center. Second thing that provides macro level context is the LA 2028 20, Olympics. You can see on this slide that the epicenter for the downtown Olympic venues is right across the street from this hotel location, which will also help visitors and tourists as they come to LA. This is a rendering with all of the activity that's going on along the Pico Corridor. You can see to the right of the hotel, which is the one that's not in grayscale, a large hotel proposed across Pico, and then the string of things that are under construction or deep in the entitlement process up the street. This project is consistent with the size and scale of existing developments and those yet to come. The next slide is the project location. There's two things in here for you to look at. One is the cross-hatched area, that is the development footprint where the towers would be. The second is the boundary of the sign district that's before you. That boundary was established through a collaborative process with the planning department, the South Park bid, and the applicant. Project characteristics are on this list, essentially three hotel brands in two towers, over a thousand rooms, approximately 500,000 square feet, the FAR and the plans that are approved by CPC was, uh, the City Planning Commission is 9.5 FAR, uh, reduced a little bit from what was studied in the uh, EIR. There's the heights of the towers, 465 and 350. There's habitable space in the podiums and activated grade level retail opportunities. There's activated roofs as well with pool decks and other venues. These are the entitlements. The three that are on the top are city council initiated actions that are before you today as legislative body. That's a general plan of amendment, zone change and height district as well as the sign district. There's a series of other things there that were already approved at city planning commission and a development agreement further down the list is also before you today. Other committees of the city council have considered a purchase and sale agreement because city land is involved as well as a hotel development incentive agreement. Next slide is a basic schematic of the site plan. You can see there's an internal motor court and all areas around the project site will be improved with landscaping. Now to the request. As the staff mentioned, there's only two conditions of approval that were at CPC that we're asking be modified. Those are roof design. We are simply asking that the roof design condition have a consistency with the downtown design guide. That language is here. And then the second one, is we revise the language and ask you to approve it regarding green walls and we believe this language is more appropriate and in fact in line with the intent of what CPC recommended. The next thing is the sign district. I'll pause here for a moment because we know signage is an important topic in LA. The most important thing I want the council or the council members to understand is there's a line of consistency between the signage that is before you today and the EIR. What was studied in the EIR and the sign types and the intensity and illumination levels and location of sign is the same that was in the EIR. It was the same that we requested before the City Planning Commission and it's the same that we're requesting today. You have a red line document of that sign district. We understand there's lots of red lines in there but that is in line with this line of consistency that I'm talking about from EIR to today. So we wanna maintain the original boundaries we want the signs that are proposed today and we're in the IR to be approved signs and we want a ministerial review process for the planning department. We also want to uh, remove illumination requirements. This is similar to the LASCD. We're not asking for anything different and it set the illumination standards for um, the same as Circa and Oceanwide across the street. We also want animated technology. That's what you see in the existing condition and we want this to be the same. The next slide is a second level of request and the hours of operation we also want to be similar to LASCD and Circa which is right next door you're going to have an awkward looking signage program as you come down FIG and then we want to eliminate requirements to have a certain amount of the building occupied before signage comes on. Signage is usually activated and tested early on in the building process. The last ones we put the Metro and LA timeshare in the development agreement where it belongs and there should be no sign reduction requirement in this project because this is the optimal location for signage. The last one is we wish for you to instruct the city attorney working with planning 
to take the sign district that we provided in the red line and make sure the final ordinance is consistent with that. Lastly, on the development agreement, as far as requests before I show you some pictures of before and after, we cleaned up the development agreement using other provisions that were not in the draft development agreement that went before CPC. Those cleanups were things that the city attorney has agreed to in several other development agreements, so we're asking for stuff that has been done by the city attorney previously, and then we reallocated some of the community benefits in working with the city. Now on to some pictures. I think this really brings it home. This is the existing frontage on Figueroa. <clears throat> There's a relatively dilapidated condition of the sidewalk and very narrow. After the project's approved, this is what it would look like. This is the corner of Figueroa and Pico. Again, an underutilized city parking lot and some restaurants that would be demolished and unimproved concrete conditions. This is what would happen after the project's approved. This one's one of the most telling. This is the existing Pico Alley. This is basically the back door to the existing establishments. We would turn it into this. One more, the Metro experience, arrival in downtown. We think this is important. The Pico stop is one of the most important stops coming into downtown. And we believe that residents, tourists, visitors alike should have a better experience. This would be getting off the Metro after the project's approved. Moving to the critical actions for today before I close. There's four things we'd like you to concentrate on. One, approve the project consistent with the March 8th development plans. That was exhibit A, that was before CPC. We don't have revisions to that. Two, approve the May 10th sign district plans. Those are before you, that's consistent with the red line. And I'm going to reiterate, there is a line of consistency between those plans submitted on March 10th and what was in the EIR and what was at CPC a month ago per our request. CPC made changes, we don't necessarily agree with those, but these are not something new to the environmental review process or our request. Second, of course, approve the legislative actions before you, which are the development agreement, sign district, and general plan amendment as modified per the request in our letters and what we brought up today. Third, and this is probably the most important, instruct the city attorney to prepare the final ordinances and agreements consistent with the letters we've provided and things we've asked for in the past, and then instruct the planning department to prepare, to prepare modified findings and conditions to the extent necessary. We believe the findings and conditions are essentially ready to go. There's a very strict timeline to close the land deal on this property, both on the city side and the private side, and so we ask that you advance the cases to the city council for a vote by May 18th, and this is our project team. You can see it's a top shelf list of individuals who know LA. And like I said, that was a quick presentation of the project. We're happy to answer any question on any item you need further comments on. That concludes my presentation. Thank you for your time. Great, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we'll go to pub continue with public comment unless you, you wait, okay. Uh, does planning staff have anything to add? Yes. Welcome. Good afternoon, members of the committee. This is Lucy Ibarra with the major project section for the Department of City Planning. The planning department has uh, fundamental concerns with the requested changes to the sign district. The planning department was not consulted prior to the submittal of the recommended changes on Friday. And so in a perfect world, we would like additional time to consider the sign district and the modifications that were made. Um, because they're so substantive, if the um, committee wishes to move the sign district forward, we have certain requirements that we would like for you to consider. One of which is to allow the planning department to continue to work with the office of the city attorney as to the form and legality of the sign district to enforce a few things. One is that there be consistency in the sign district as, uh, as to the illumination standards, the sign types, and the provisions that were analyzed in the EIR. The other is to maintain project permit compliance for the digital and super graphic signs in sub area A, to remove any reference of any signs that were not previously considered by the planning department or the city planning commission, to ensure consistency with the municipal code and our pattern and practice with respect to other sign districts, and to remove any requested exemptions from building code and other municipal code thing, uh, standards that are intended to protect adjacent property owners and residences. So provided those pieces are included in your motion today, 
the city planning commission just wants to, ex I mean, the city planning department just wants to express our concerns and our um, ability to continue to work with the city attorney to make sure that the project and the sign district and all the related findings and associated cases are consistent to ensure um, accuracy between the related documents and to allow us additional time to consider all the substantive changes that were requested by, um, by the applicant today. Okay, thank you. The applicant, are you okay if we uh, incorporate some of those requests by the planning department? I think what we would prefer is to have the requests that were in our letter approved today. That's our first position. Um, like I said, there's been a line of consistency between the EIR, what was requested at CPC, and what you see today. We're not deviating materially from the signed plan that was submitted a long time ago in the planning process. Um, at, the, at the very least, I think what we could do is, as long as there's a um, instruction for the city attorney to prepare the final ordinance consistent with what was provided today, uh, assuming planning wants input on that process, I think that on a deeper read by the planning department in connection with us and the city attorney's office, I think they would find that there is that line of consistency that I've been speaking of. So if we need to do that, um, that's okay, but we do want to uh, keep the request that it's approved in a material way consistent with the documents we submitted today. Okay, thank you. We'll continue with public comment. Mr. Bertoni. I, I just want to just be very clear that, that the planning department's role, we have to implement this project. So I want to make sure that this, that our staff has had a chance to review it, understand it, and it's not a consulting role. This is the department that actually oversees the implementation of it. So I just want to make sure that where the action includes, Thank you. includes that. Councilmember uh, Adrian Corisani, City Attorney's Office, and I think for um, purposes of just making sure that everyone's clear on what our office can actually do during forum and legality, we are limited to just that. So. It sounds like there are some issues that may require more analysis and perhaps further consideration from a policy perspective. So I just want to sort of bring that up in the event that we may have to come back prior to transmitting something final, regardless of what the action is here today, just to get some clarification. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, we'll continue with public comment. Don Liu, Patty Berman, Ellen Riotto. And uh, Mr. Liu, who is the general manager, you have all the time you'd like to take. We could stay here till midnight if you want, but it's up to you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Good afternoon, Council members. As you know, I'm the executive director of the Department of Convention and Tourism Development. Our department has overseen a series of success successful years as our city has continued to set new tourism records with 2017 marking our seventh consecutive year of tourism growth. The 48.5 million visitors we welcomed last year puts us well on our way to meeting Mayor Garcetti's goal of welcoming 50 million tourists by 2020. Growth like this is crucial to feeding our hospitality and tourism industry, one of our city's most important drivers of job growth and economic impact. But as we look to advance our city's position on the global stage, we must address the ability to support the upcoming outpouring of visitors. Projects like the Fig and Pico Conference Center Hotel before you today speak directly to this need. This project will provide visitors with a strategically located, attractive, and affordable lodging option while also materially improving our ability to compete for conventions that millions in economic impact Los Angeles and supporting jobs within the hospitality and leisure sector. One in nine jobs in the county. The Fig and Pico hotels directly support our growing global tourism needs and help us sustain, sustainably prepare for our city's continued tourism growth and the influx of visitors expected with a potential convention center expansion. Simply put, this project is exactly what we need at this time. It offers visitors hotels at a more affordable price point, great public amenities, and is in the optimal location directly across the street from our convention center. It's also a crucial step in the push to bring 8,000 hotel rooms, as you stated, Councilman, within walking distance of the Convention Center by 2020. I thank you for your hard work in supporting this project to date and hope you'll join me in continuing to advocate for smart developments like this one. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Patty Berman, Ellen Riotto, Genesis Diaz. 
Mr. Councilmember and members of this committee. My name's Patty Berman. I am the president of the Downtown Los Angeles Neighborhood Council. We have a letter in the packet for this of approval for a lot of good reasons. First of all, we could actually use some hotel rooms downtown. A couple would be really nice. This place is providing them in a perfect area. Secondly, the area right now is blighted and needs something there, so we're happy to see this going in. Most important, and this is really important to the Neighborhood Council, they're providing a wonderful pedestrian experience with their design. We're not going to be walking past walls that look like prison walls. We're going to have a really nice patio area with, with plants, and it's, it's just well thought for the pedestrian experience, something that many of the larger buildings are not taking into consideration. We have all of our cards on the table with this one. Please, pr please approve it. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Ellen Riato, and I am the executive director of the South Park Business Improvement District. The mission of the South Park bid is to keep our 52 blocks of downtown is as clean, safe, and thriving as possible, which is why we support smart urban growth and economic development initiatives like this one. We see the FIG and PICO project as a welcome improvement to the current conditions on the site. It will benefit the community by enlivening the Pico corridor between Flower Street and Fig, improving the streetscape on all project frontages, and enhancing security in the area by increasing pedestrian activity and improving lighting on the site. The Fig and Pico project also represents a key opportunity in our district as it will facilitate successful events at and the potential expansion of the convention center. The project also delivers on a crucial need by creating a stronger sense of arrival in South Park and the greater downtown area by developing a vibrant hotel complex adjacent to the Metro, Blue, Metro Station at Pico Station. Thank you. Thank you. Genesis Diaz, Joanne Danik, Danganen, Ernesto Medrano, Jack Rubens. Good afternoon, my name is Genesis Diaz and I'm here on behalf of Unite Here. We represent 30,000 working people across Southern California and Arizona in the hotel, food service, and hospitality industries. It is our job to ensure that hotel workers share in the growing prosperities of the hospitality sector and to support projects that help achieve this goal. Lightstone Group's proposed project, which is before you today, is a perfect example of the type of development that we advocate for. As you can imagine, we share the city's vision of expanding the convention center and bringing in 8,000 hotel rooms within walking distance to support the convention center and growing tourism needs in Los Angeles. But it's crucial that the city partner with developers like the Lightstone Group who will work with us to make sure that new hotels meet the needs of the city and the community while also benefiting workers. By working with us, Lightstone has done just that and ensured that the hotel operations at the Fig and Pico project will help secure quality jobs for our members. We thank you for your work in advancing the project to this point. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Joanne Dingan and I'm here on behalf of Central City Association here to support the Fig and Pico project. We represent a large and diverse uh, community of businesses, trade associations, and nonprofits dedicating to building a more vibrant downtown. So we firmly, firmly believe that supporting developments like this is crucial to delivering our mission. Uh, the Fig and Pico team has proposed a project that fulfills a longtime city vision to redevelop the city and private owned parcels located directly across the street from the convention center. Uh, Lightstone Group has been able to create a project in, that squarely fits with the city's vision for the site and brings to market a unique hotel complex capable of delivering much needed select service hotel rooms to the convention center. This project will, pre will benefit the community in many ways and will serve as a tremendous economic catalyst for our city and the entire region. CCA welcomes Lightstone's substantial investment in downtown and urges you to support this project. Thank you. Thank you. Ernesto Medrano, Jack Rubens. Good afternoon, my name is Ernesto Medrano. I represent 140,000 hardworking men and women in the construction industry. Uh, we're here because we're here to support the uh, Fig Pico project. We think that this is the way to build hotels in Los Angeles. When you have an opportunity to negotiate agreements that provide for local hire, veteran preference, helmets to hard hat programs, we are the path to the middle class, and this hotel will provide that path and that opportunity for young men and women in Los Angeles to enter careers, to enter our apprenticeships, and to make a long time career and earn good wages, have jobs that have health care, pension, 
defined benefit plans and be able to afford uh, to live in Los Angeles and to uh, take care of their families. So with that, we urge you to, we thank you for all the hard work and the support that you have, and we want to urge you to continue to support uh, this project. Thank you. Thank you very much. Jack Rubens here. Okay, great. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Mr. Price. Thank you, thank you Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, first of all, just me just uh, this is an exciting project on the doorstep of a, what will be a soon revitalized convention center. And so this is a, uh, a uh, an important development in the uh, in our efforts to really make downtown an, an accessible and a desirable place, uh, particularly uh, uh, as we have an expanded convention center. I want to uh, just thank uh, the council office. Uh, um, uh, and your leadership, uh, Mr. Chairman, and the and the developer, uh, for really stepping up and um, I think creating the kind of project that makes a lot of sense uh, in this area. And I think it's significant that there's been an interesting cross section of support from unions, um, but also from the city family, CLA, city attorney, planning department, all working together to uh, to make this project uh, uh, work. Uh, Special uh, shout out to planning, appreciate their efforts. Uh, the, uh, the major projects division's been getting a lot of work uh, last, uh, last several years, and so uh, we appreciate Lucy Ibarra and her efforts um, at the Reef, the football club, and certainly this project uh, as well. But I just have a couple of questions uh, about the project. We know that uh, we need these 1,000 153 rooms desperately um, downtown. Uh, I'm just curious, one, about the configuration. I, I remember reading something that the size of the rooms is a little smaller than conventional, or uh, could you talk about the, the configuration of the rooms and the price point uh, of, of, the, uh, of the project? Sure, that's a great question. Um, this project delivers a price point and a configuration in room type that the downtown area does not have at this point. So it's a differentiated type of project uh, and type of hotel. It's been successful in New York and particularly in this area where you have a relatively small development footprint but yet adjacent to a very high demand like the convention center in LA Live and Staples. What you have in this product is a smaller room but more activated common spaces like the rooftop pools, the lounges, the restaurants. And so we believe that not only will this enliven the city more, uh, where people don't want to dwell necessarily in their room. They want to either be in the common spaces of the hotel or more importantly out in the city spending their visitor or tourist dollars. Um, and also the price point I think is important. We've coordinated from the beginning of this project with the convention center, um, the board of tourism, and we heard a common theme which was there's hotel rooms and they all seem to be at generally a similar price point, which when you get a convention goer, Yes, there's executives and other people that can afford to stay at Ritz or other projects like that, but there's a lot of people who are looking for that mid-range or lower-range hotel <laughs> price. So this project will deliver those lower price point rooms with very uh, great amenities and uh, a new product for LA, and we're excited to bring it. So what are the dimensions of the rooms? What, how, how large are they? What's the range? Around the 250 square foot. So again, a smaller, everything is kind of uniquely positioned, uh, bringing kind of a new model into the market where you have your chargers, your uh, things that you wanna use on a business trip when you're at a convention, all closely oriented to you in a comfortable and very creative and uh, articulate design space. But then again, you're drawn to the city itself and the common amenities. Well, again, sounds like an exciting project, uh, Mr. Chairman. I hope that uh, we can move forward with this on the project and on the assigned district um, issues. I know there's some um, uh, some things that have to be resolved, but I hope we can move forward and, and get them resolved. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Price. Any other questions or comments? No. So we will move uh, the item and uh, with respect to item seven, the sign district, we move that 
We approve and recommend that the city adopt a sign district for the Figaro and Pico sign district as modified by the Plum Committee today in our document and uh, set forth and more fully in the revised draft ordinance attached as exhibit B2 to the correspondence submitted to the council file dated May 10th. We instruct the city attorney with input from city planning to prepare and present a final draft of the sign ordinance establishing the Figaro and Pico sign district as modified by the Plum Committee today. With respect to item eight, the development agreement, we move to approve and recommend that the city council adopt a development agreement between Lightstone and the city of Los Angeles as modified by the Plum Committee today, today and as set forth more fully in the revised draft attached as exhibit A2 to the correspondence submitted to the council file dated May 10th. We instruct the city attorney with input from the city planning to prepare and present a final draft of the development agreement between Lightstone and the city of Los Angeles as modified by the Plum Committee today. With respect to item nine, the GPA and zone change, we move to approve and recommend that the mayor and city council approve a general plan amendment to the central city community plan to redesignate the subject property from high density residential to regional commercial land use, including a modification to footnote three of the central city community plan to allow for a floor area ratio of 10 to one. We approve and recommend that the city council adopt a zone change in height district from QR54DO and C24DO to TQC24DO SN, including new DL limita limitations on the project site. We amend and adopt the conditions of approval for this case, including Q conditions A.1A relating to roof design and A.1B relating to blank walls to reflect the revisions discussed by the committee today and as more fully described in the correspondence submitted to the council filed dated May 10th. To, ex to the extent related city planning cases include the same conditions of approval, the conditions as modified by Plum shall control with respect to the development of the Fig Pico Conference Center Hotels project. With respect to all the items seven, eight, and nine, we move to adopt the findings attached to the City Planning Commission letter of determination dated March 29th and instruct City Planning to revise those findings as needed, consistent with the changes approved by the committee today. Also, in light of the comments from planning and today, we further move that sign review procedures for any digital and super graphic signs will be project permit compliance. With regard to animation and illumination standards, we move that the standards applicable to signs on Figueroa are consistent with those applicable to signs in the LASED specific plan. Animation shall not be permitted for digital signs on Flower Street. Hours of operation for Flower Street shall also be consistent with that of the LASED. Lastly, we find, based on the independent judgment of the decision maker after consideration of the whole of the administrative record, the project was assessed in the EIR and associated errata certified on February 9th, and no subsequent EIR or addendum is required for approval of the project. That's a summary of the motion we're making today. You look like you're in deep thought. Council member, just to clarify, um, there were also concerns about consistency with the EIR. So as um, our office is going through form and legality, you, um, your, your motion indicates that we um, go with the draft provided by the um, developer. But is that to include consistency and ensure consistency with the EIR? Yes, we, we'll incorporate that into the motion. OK, any other questions or comments on that item? We'll move accordingly. Seeing no objection, so ordered. Thank you. Next item, Roberto. Uh, what's your pleasure, Councilman? Uh, there's the ADU ordinances. A item number 10, let's move to that. OK, uh, item 10, Councilman, this is a city planning commission recommended proposed uh, ordinance to regulate what's commonly known as granny flats, accessory dwelling units in the city. Okay, staff here to present this item, please. Welcome. Good afternoon. Arthi Varma, mm -hmm. Department of City Planning. 
Yeah, and before you is a report back from the Department of City Planning uh, regarding a request made by the committee in March of 2017, as well as a draft ordinance prepared by the Department of City Planning incorporating changes directed by the committee, as well as cha recent changes to state law. Uh, just by way of background, since it's been several months since we've been here with this ordinance, uh, accessory dwelling units, otherwise known as second units or granny flats, refers to a second home on a property with another primary home. They come in three types, new detached accessory dwelling units, attached accessory dwelling units that are a result of an addition to an existing structure, as well as conversions of existing space. There's been a number of policy changes regarding ADUs in California and Los Angeles uh, in the past couple of years. Most importantly, state law changed dramatically in January of 2017. It mandated that all uh, existing local ADU ordinances must provide for a ministerial process of approval, generally allowing conversions without restriction. And any local ordinance that fails to meet these requirements of the new state law would be considered null and void. Uh, so the city's previous accessory dwelling unit ordinance did not meet these criteria, and therefore our local ordinance became void. And for the last uh, over a year, we've been uh, reliant on the basic standards set by the state. The proposed ordinance before you today would establish a new city accessory dwelling unit ordinance that would be in compliance with the state law. It would repeal the existing 82nd unit law. It would incorporate new state provisions, including those added last year. Uh, it would also introduce tailored accessory dwelling unit regulations that recognize the diversity of Los Angeles uh, and Los Angeles' unique neighborhoods. Uh, the, looking at the proposed ordinance as it compares to state law, they largely mirror the standards in state law with uh, several exceptions. First, in terms of location, uh, new accessory dwelling units would not be allowed between the primary structure uh, and the residence of the residence and the street. Uh, replacement parking of an accessory dwelling unit would not be permitted in the front yard setback. Uh, in terms of uh, equine keeping, per committee's direction, there are some standards to ensure that equine keeping would not be precluded as a result of new accessory dwelling units, including certain distance separation requirements between the equine keeping facility and the accessory dwelling unit on uh, adjacent lots. Uh, there would also be some additional side yard setbacks required to further provide a distance between the ADU and the equine keeping facility. Uh, there would also be some additions regarding movable tiny homes as directed by uh, committee last year. These would include uh, design standards to ensure that these movable tiny homes actually resemble uh, primary dwelling units, including requirements on uh, exterior materials and cladding. Uh, today, movable tiny homes are treated as mobile homes and are only uh, permitted in RV parks. The proposed ordinance would allow movable tiny homes to be used as accessory dwelling units in residential neighborhoods. Uh, they would require these uh, structures to be built to the ANSI A119.5 code for habitable structures. That includes electrical, plumbing, uh, structural requirements uh, similar to uh, habitable building structures uh, for, required for the primary dwelling unit. Uh, the draft ordinance also includes design regulations such as screening of the wheels, uh, roof pitch requirements, um, and connections to uh, utilities and foundation uh, if desired. Uh, and the, the final difference between state law is a locational prohibition in the hillside uh, area of our city uh, per committee's instruction in 2017. Uh, the committee requested a report back from the planning department to evaluate the number of parcels that would be impacted by that prohibition, particularly on streets uh, located in the hillside area that are abutting a standard roadway. Uh, so just quickly going over that information in the report back, of the parcels eligible for potential ADUs uh, in the hillside area, approximately 15% of those streets uh, are substandards or have a width of less than 28 feet, which is the standard street width for a hillside limited standard roadway. Uh, just to note, the Bureau of Engineering does not uh, currently track existing street dimensions for hillside collectors and hillside locals, which are the other two street designations in the hillside overlay area. So that 15% could be larger um, if more comprehensive data were available. Just as a supplementary form of evaluation, we looked at the number of ADUs permitted in 2017 in the hillside areas. As you may be aware, uh, since the new state law was enacted, uh, the city has permitted over 2,300 new accessory dwelling units. About 7% of those 
permits uh, were in the hillside areas in 2017. More specifically, approximately 2% of those permits uh, would be considered additions or new construction that would be prohibited by the proposed ordinance. There were several other accessory dwelling units constructed in the hillside area that would be permitted uh, under the proposed ordinance, and those would be conversions which are allowed under state law. So really the lower amount of accessory dwelling unit construction in the hillside area is probably reflective of the topography and the construction regulations that already exist in that hillside area. Uh, just in terms of uh, next steps, uh, it's important to note that should the, the committee consider or decide to incorporate these draft amendments, the ordinance would need to go back to City Planning Commission for consideration since the issue of movable tiny homes was not considered by CPC initially. Uh, they would then bring the ordinance back to Plum, at which time the committee could direct the city attorney to prepare the ordinance for form and legality and move to the full city council for consideration. With that, staff is available for questions. Thank you. We'll go to public comment for right now and come back. Carla Tra or Trox. Ira Belgrade. Ira Belgrade, YMBLA. Because of the time constraint here, I have to cut to the chase. Um, unfortunately, the planning department and the city attorney's office are wrong in what they've told you. The city's proposed ordinance contains language that will render it null and void upon its passing. The state's notwithstanding clause is absolute. Legally existing structures can be converted to ADUs, and municipalities cannot put their own time stamp on what constitutes existing. Legally existing means created legally at any time in the past or the future. Residential floor area cannot be counted in the equation of conversions. The phrases in paragraph E, lawfully existing as of the effective date of this subsection, and lawfully existed prior to the effective date of this subsection, violate state law and will render this ordinance null and void. AB 494 already resolved the issue of front setback parking, making it permissible. And if you wait a few months, SB 831 removes all main house replacement parking and any floor area ratio calculations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Teresa Baker, Kevin Polk. I'm Carla Truex. I'm a member of Latch Collective as well as At Home Housing. Um, Latch Collective is interested in tiny homes um, as well as um, over 100 members of At Home Housing throughout Los Angeles interested in housing cooperatives, co-housing. Um, and this proposal, I am definitely in support of this proposal and appreciate the opportunities we've had to, um, for input. Uh, it really meets the housing need, um, uh, how we don't all fit in this, the same form of housing. So I support the proposal. Thank you. Great, thank you. Good afternoon. I'm an advocate for diverse and affordable housing options, and I'm specifically interested in movable tiny houses as an uh, option for legally cited, well-built backyard dwellings. I would like to recognize the efforts of the committee and planning staff for hearing the requests of the community last um, year at the ADU hearing and creating strong, detailed, and thoughtful language. This housing option is really desired by many, especially students, recent graduates, and individuals trying to figure out a way to retire. And I'm familiar with this because I lead educational workshops on this housing type. There are, these are really efficient, small, and sustainable homes that offer everything one needs for daily, comfortable, comfortable daily living. And they are quick and affordable to build and site. And while Reasons behind the um, interest in these houses are diverse. Financial strains are really a huge part of this equation, and LA needs diverse and affordable housing options, and tiny houses are one part of fixing this big problem. Thank you. Thank you. Kevin Polk, Caleb Quesada, Charlie Mims. I'd like, <clears throat> I'd like to thank the committee for considering movable tiny houses in, as accessory dwelling units. LA needs more housing, and ADUs are the lowest hanging fruit available. Movable tiny houses are the fastest and least expensive way for homeowners to take advantage of the ADU opportunity this ordinance is intended to offer. There are a lot of homeowners who wouldn't be able to afford to build fixed foundation ADUs, um, but they could afford, afford to put in a spot for them. And so this opens, up, opens this opportunity up to them. 
and at the same time, there are hundreds of thousands of potential homeowners who are now locked out of the market because it's become too expensive for them to be able to buy. By adding movable tiny houses into the mix, you can use their earning and borrowing power to fuel new housing construction. Thank you. Thank you. Charlie Mims. Elizabeth Harrell. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Charlie Mims, I'm President of Hillside Federation. Uh, we'd like to support moving this uh, ordinance forward, uh, in particular because we want to get the ban on ADUs in the hillside areas uh, reinforced. Uh, we have narrow streets, notwithstanding what might be called standard in hillside areas. You have parking on one side, and you can only get one car to pass. You can't get two cars passing on hillside streets. This, al this also affects uh, access for uh, fire and police for public safety purposes, especially in uh, fire-prone hillside areas. The first we'd heard that the state law banned conversions of existing units was uh, when the uh, ordinance was uh, brought back to the committee here, and uh, we're, we're going to be taking a look at that with some of our uh, land use lawyers and, uh, and perhaps come back to make a comment on that, but uh, I'd uh, appreciate if uh, you could ask the uh, attorney to take another look at that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Elizabeth Heron. I'm a hillside architect. I've done hillside architecture for 30 years. My concern has to do with the prohibitions of hillside ADUs. Um, I think that the wording, I can't even quite figure out what the wording says, but I think what the ordinance is stating is that <clears throat> any structure cannot be converted to an ADU unless it's existing as of the effective date of the ordinance. And if that's so, then you wouldn't be able to design an ADU in a new house, um, which I have made a lot of provisions in hillside houses just to make the houses more affordable for people. Um, and to uh, you know, allow people to have some income so th to support their mortgage and to create housing. I also think it might be um, not in keeping with the uh, legality of the state regulation, um, 2299, in that um, if you want to prohibit things because of safety issues, and I understand that's a concern in Hillside, restrict the um, roadway if, or within a certain vicinity to transit as been done before, but not a blanket denial of hillside. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any questions or comments? Okay, well, I'd like to, um, it appears that uh, the ordinance uh, has uh, made some changes that were not considered by CPC and some of those changes, such as the tiny homes portion, were added at the direction of Plum and the department has wisely included new provisions to ensure this ordinance is in conformance with state law. So with an abundance of caution, we'd like to um, refer the ordinance back to CPC for their review and hold the item here until it comes back from CPC. We've been advised that we need to have CPC um, look at those new changes. Also at the request of Councilmember Englander, uh, the page three of the planning's proposed ordinance in parcels where equine keeping is allowed, the language should be expanded and modified so that the proposed ADU siting requirements also apply to parcels that are adjacent to parcels that can keep equines, even if the subject parcel seeking the ADU does not allow for equine keeping. Additionally, the use of the term allowed should be clarified. It should not be defined as the current existence of an equine. Rather, it should be defined as the underlying use and ability to keep an equine. These clarifications would ensure the continued viability of equine keeping in the city by reducing the distancing pressures from the siting of ADUs. So if we could incorporate that into the motion, please. Any other comments? Okay, we'll move that, uh, keep the item here, and move the, uh, refer it to CPC for their review and have it come back. And if we could also send a note if we could uh, have this heard as quickly as possible in CPC to get back. We, it's been some time now. We want to move this as quickly as possible. So, thank you. So ordered. Item number 11, 
Um, item 11, Councilman, this is a motion, Rodriguez, Englander, Rio. It's instructing the planning department and the city attorney to prepare a report on um, development standards that would protect ADUs uh, from being adversely impacted when located in K districts and in non-K districts. Okay, um, we'll go to public comment on this. Elizabeth Heron. You added to the wrong one, okay. Okay, so we'll move to adopt this motion without objection. So ordered. Item number 12. Item 12, Councilman, this is a report from the Cultural Heritage Commission. It's relative to the inclusion of the Standard Oil Company Sales Department Building, Women's Building, uh, located in CD1 as a historic cultural monument. Okay, Steph. Good afternoon, Council Members. Ken Bernstein with Department of City Planning and Office of Historic Resources. The nomination before you is for a 1914 three-story industrial office building located on North Spring Street near the Spring Street Bridge. The Cultural Heritage Commission unanimously found the uh, structure eligible for historic cultural monument status based on three separate criteria. First, for architecture as an excellent and highly intact example of Beaux-Arts architecture applied to an industrial building. Second, as a, a work of a master architect, a highly intact and important work by the noted Southern California architect Myron Hunt. And additionally, for its association uh, with the cultural and social history of Los Angeles, both for its association with the Standard Oil Company of California, an important entity in the development of the oil industry, and uh, at least as importantly for its later association uh, with the Women's Building, which housed a feminist art collective which greatly influenced the development and evolution of the 1970s and 80s feminist art movement in Los Angeles as well as nationwide. Thank you. Um, Adrian Scott Fine, the applicant. Good afternoon, Adrian Scott Fine with Los Angeles Conservancy. Uh, we're very pleased to bring this uh, historic cultural monument nomination to your attention and encourage your support of it. It's very significant in terms of its history, uh, both from Standard Oil, but certainly more recent history around the women's building as a place that really uh, women artists could carve out a space and uh, uh, share and tell uh, and uh, experience an important part of uh, history and arts during the 70s, 80s, and up into the early 90s. Um, this is part of our work around LGBTQ historic places, and uh, we want to be proactive in recognizing this history um, and uh, showcasing it, so we encourage your support. Thank you. Thank you. Maria Caras, Carolina Ibarra Mendoza. Council members, uh, I'm here in support of the inclusion of the Standard Oil Sales Department building and the Women's Building in the list of inclusion of historic cultural monuments in the city of LA. The Women's Building is so important historically in feminist art and women's rights in the United States that world-class institutions like the Smithsonian Institute and the Getty Research Institute of Los Angeles have uh, elected to house the Women's Building Archives uh, ad infinitum. In 2011, the Getty Museum mounted a series of exhibitions called the Pacific Standard Time, which highlighted leading contributors to artistic innovation and social change on the West Coast. The Women's Building had a major exhibition in this initiative. The Getty Research Institute determined that the Women's Building was so important that it has acquired a set of archives and has published with artists from the Women's Building all these volumes and um, books about the Women's Building. So I urge the council to um, memorialize the Women's Building and ensure that it is preserved forever. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. And after we'll have uh, Terry Wolverton, John Sanders, and Gerald Gubatan from CD1. Okay. 
Welcome. Good afternoon, council members. I'm Carolina Ibarra Mendoza, a Chicana feminist artist and freelance graphic designer. I'm here in support of the women's building to be recognized as a historical landmark. In 2017, I was one of 15 artists who received a fellowship from the women's building and Metabolic Studios special projects and archiving to create new work inspired by the history and legacy of the women's building. Later that year, I began to work with artists Leslie Labowitz and Suzanne Lacey on the online archive exhibit Against Violence .art, currently still under construction. The website presents a work of Ariadne, a social art network, which often worked in collaboration with the women's building in the late 70s and early 80s. As current council members, this is your opportunity to uphold the legacy of the women's building by supporting its nomination as a landmark. In the late 70s and early 80s, Los Angeles council members, including Mayor Tom Bradley, openly endorsed the works. Uh, I sincerely hope that you take this opportunity. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Good afternoon, council members. My name is Terry Wolverton, and I'm the president of the board of directors of the Women's Building, the nonprofit organization that was housed at 1727 North Spring Street from 1976 until 1991. During those years, hundreds, uh, if not thousands, of women from around the city, uh, across the country, and around the world came through the doors of the Women's Building to inspire and be inspired by the creativity and uh, empowerment that was encouraged there. Uh, in this current time of the Me Too and Time's Up movement, when uh, we see that all of women's problems have not been addressed yet, uh, it's exceptionally important to keep this inspiration in people's memories, and uh, this is a way to do it. Thank you. Great. Thank you. John Sanders. Uh, good afternoon. I'm here on behalf of the owner, uh, Toby Maisie, uh, and he's just requesting that there's a, he was sort of, all this stuff happened, uh, and he wasn't, made aware or didn't have enough time to kind of prepare. And uh, he's asking for a little bit more time before this goes to a vote. He'd like to know exactly what uh, the designation will uh, encompass, um, what that means for him as an owner of the building, um, what you know steps he needs to take if he wants to restore the building, which he has plans to do. So he's just asking for more time before this goes to uh, the council for a vote. Thank you very much. Thank you. Gerald Gubatan. Good afternoon, Gerald Gubatan, Councilman Cedillo's office. Our office hosted a sit-down meeting with the owner, the owner's rep, and representatives of the LA Conservancy, and we had an extended conversation around concerns of the owner. Uh, one concern was, for example, would the designation create a sort of an encumbrance upon the property, somehow impacting the property valuation? Would the designation limit the owner's ability to reuse the property or do uh, modifications that would impact the exterior, like an exterior elevator. Um, and the owner did indicate he really had no intent of demol demolishing the site. Uh, nonetheless, we had a conversation. Our office believes that some of those issues are not insurmountable. Uh, the Conservancy has offered to be available, and our office also to be available, to collaborate, to support strategies to enhance the property, allow for adaptive reuse, and address the concern around how it might impact valuation. Uh, this is located right next to the LA River, the state parks. There is real estate investment that is flowing into the district, and so we want to support our stakeholders. We want them to enhance value, and we don't believe the concerns are insurmountable. If the request is for more time, there is a time limit on action. Um, of course, you can certainly act today and send it forward to council. There's a window there. Um, we would not necessarily oppose reasonable time to allow the owner the benefit. Uh, one more point, I believe this was, uh, Cultural Heritage Commission did do a public hearing, but this was prior to the new ordinance, which calls for notification earlier in the process. 
And so this was one of the last items that came kind of before that new ordinance becomes effective. So we do understand the concern around due process and notification. We want to be fair and balanced here. We did create a forum to have that conversation. We would certainly defer to the committee's wishes here, but overall our office does support the nomination. Great, thank you. So when is the uh, final date to act on this? Uh, June 13th. Okay. So um, I'd recommend that uh, the owner of the property get together with uh, CD1 and our planning department to see what could be uh, any uh, questions or concerns they may have in the interim. Uh, but for now, I'd, we'd recommend that we move forward and approve um, and nominate this. Uh, and there's some time for the owner to discuss with uh, CD1 and the planning department. Any objections to that motion? Seeing none, so ordered. Thank you. Item 15. Item 15, Councilman, it's a City Planning Commission report and appeals filed by L. Farmer on behalf of U Unite Here Local 11. Gideon Krakow is the uh, attorney. They're appealing the various entitlements as it relates to two conditional uses, a zone variant and a site plan review for the construction of, of a eight-story, 220-room boutique hotel in CD13. Okay, thank you. Uh, get, good afternoon, committee members. Georgia Pugh, along with the Department of City Planning. Uh, the case before you is an appeal in its entirety of the City Planning Commission's approval of a conditional use um, pursuant to sections 1224U uh, to permit an increase in floor area ratio beyond the currently permitted three to one as established by the development limitation under ordinance number 165661 up to a maximum of FAR of 3.69 to one a conditional use to permit the sale of a full line of alcoholic beverages for on-site consumption at a proposed hotel with in-room control access cabinets, on-site restaurants and bars, and pursuant to LAMC section 1227, a zone variance to permit rooftop dining above the ground floor in the C4 zone, and pursuant to LAMC section 1605, site plan review for a development project which creates a results in an increase of 50 or more guest rooms. Uh, which authorizes the construction, use, and maintenance of a 220 guest room hotel, uh, the Godfrey Hollywood, with a 2,723 square foot ground floor restaurant, 1,440 square foot rooftop bar and lounge, with a total of 476 seats, 133 within the ground floor restaurant, 66 within a third floor courtyard, and 277 on the rooftop. The project includes 140, or sorry, 104 on-site vehicle parking spaces and 94 bicycle parking spaces. Uh, the project is consistent with other Holly, Hollywood hotel projects within the Hollywood Regional Center, including the Dream, uh, the W, and Mama Shelter. Uh, conditions have been developed in consultation with the department or with the um, LAPD, and they have been incorporated to address noise and other operational impacts of the project to ensure that the hotel will be a compatible uh, neighbor with their surrounding development. Um, on February 2nd, 2018, the Department of Transportation has reviewed the traffic study and determined that the study was adequately analyzed the project. Uh, hotel land uses per the Institute of Transportation Engineers trip generation are described as places of lodging that provide sleeping accommodations and supporting facilities, such as restaurants, cocktail lounges, meetings, and banquet rooms or convention facilities, uh, limited recreational facilities such as pools and fitness rooms, and or retail and service shops. Uh, through communication with the Department of Transportation, they affirmed that the traffic study is adequate um, and adequately analyzes the project. Uh, with that, staff recommends that the committee deny the appeal and sustain uh, City Planning Commission's action. And staff is available with any questions, if you have any. Great. Thank you. The uh, appellant, Al Farmer, Ella Farmer. Uh, it's just L, Councilman. Okay, thank you. Um, and I have five minutes, yes? Yes, five minutes okay. as the appellant. All right, um, so I'll just start uh, introducing myself again. My name is Al Farmer. Uh, I'm speaking today on behalf of myself and for the 30,000 members of Unite Here Local 11, the Hospitality Workers Union. Um, we couldn't all fit here today, unfortunately, but uh, maybe next time. Um, 
So our, uh, our first appeal to building and safety about this project, uh, this previously entitled project, uh, and comments submitted to the Zoning Administrator hearing and subsequent Planning Commission hearing uh, have identified multiple potentially significant environmental impacts resulting from the modifications to this project that are outlined in the addendum uh, and uh, identify a number of issues um, that are not studied by the project and not mentioned in the MNT addendum. And those flaws need to be corrected with a new project uh, scoping meeting and planning process uh, and at the very least a new mitigated negative declaration. This should be considered a full project. Um, it is just under, uh, the is a hair under what the city would mandate uh, be considered a new project. Um, and under CEQA, it, it, it certainly appears to be so. Um, I asked the members of the planning committee, the planning uh, and land use management committee to, to grant my appeal and deny the discretionary approval sought here to not certify the addendum at this time. Uh, the applicant, uh, made a point of beginning construction before this entitlement process had really even begun, before public hearings had taken place. Um, they, uh, they, were, they were going for these building permits based off of the entitlements that are before you now in the addendum. Uh, so they were building from the start uh, with a project that wasn't approved uh, and with a project much larger than the one that they were enti that the, that was entitled for the land and that they purchased. Uh, on the issue of noise impacts, I'm just going to go through some of these that are mentioned in the, letter, the updated letter that you've all received. Um, no measurements of actual noise vibration or levels were taken to establish an accurate baseline. Uh, no enforceable performance-based requirements are imposed in actual mitigation measures. Uh, the limitations proposed by the planning department and LAPD don't go far enough to deal with the 9,000 square feet of rooftop use that is occurring. Uh, I know the planning department says that it is 1,400 square feet, but the totality of the roof is around 9,000 square feet, and there, are no, there exist no project features that will prevent that entire space from being utilized as the rooftop bar and party area. Oversaturation of these types of venues, uh, the Dream, several other uh, properties nearby, uh, that all have these rooftop bars. Uh, it's becoming common practice and applicants will say that it's absolutely necessary for them to keep their projects working, uh, but the fact is they have a massive impact on the community. Uh, we would support uh, conditions on this that limit it to, uh, to at least uh, 9 p.m. or earlier. Uh, we need to change how things are working in Hollywood. The deferred mitigation uh, for special events, there will be 24 of those a year, that's twice a month. They're gonna have special events that are not just regular bar uses of this, of this property and it's 9,000 square foot rooftop, rooftop. They plan to have special events there just about every other week and those are gonna be well above and beyond your typical Friday night. Uh, the land uses in this project are under, underestimated as well. Um, as I mentioned, there, there is the, uh, the thousands of square feet on the roof deck above what was said. Um, there are issues, uh, contrary to the claims of the project, is the project is not consistent with the spirit and intent of the general plan. The project is not consistent with the city's general plan. And it is misleading to compare the project against the Hollywood Community Plan update, which was invalidated by the courts a few, four years ago at this point. Uh, there are a number of other issues, including traffic and greenhouse gases, uh, that are not sufficiently studied by the MND addendum. Uh, this project should be looked at as the full project that the applicant is proposing, not the difference between the two, um, because the impacts are going to be greater and there are significant impacts that the planning department has unfortunately missed. Uh, this project is not ready and it needs to be studied further. Uh, I encourage you to grant my appeal. Uh, and to not grant uh, or not move forward with the applicant's project at this time. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now to the um, <laughs> applicant, the representative, Jerry Newman. Uh, council members, uh, members of the committee, my name is Jerry Newman, representing the applicant in this matter. Uh, thank you for the time um, in which you are spending on this. Um, I do think there's some issues that we need to clarify relative to um, the appellant's uh, description of the project. It's important to note that 
One, this project sits in regional center. It was a previously approved project that had never been appealed. Uh, it received site plan review at 175 hotel rooms and it had a rooftop amenity that was actually 4,000 square feet larger than what we're proposing today. What we're here to, or what the project's intent was, was when the app, when our client acquired the site from the previous uh, developer who had no hotel operation experience, they looked at the facility and they said, there's no back of house. Uh, they haven't really dealt with the lobby area or, or the amenities, the bike parking, the laundry, none of that has really been dealt with, so we need to take a new look at it. And they had double spaced height in a number of areas that didn't make sense. So what they decided to do was they decided to continue and build the exact building that was entitled and start moving forward while they went through this process. So to the extent that this process ended up with them not achieving entitlement, they have a, a, a building that responded to the market today and didn't have to wait through another entitlement process before building a hotel. To the extent that they were granted the rights, they could merely change the double-heighted space to add a few additional rooms and add the dining and the bar area to the rooftop. As Staff has indicated there has been no indication at all and no substantial evidence or substantive evidence has been presented by the appellant that we are outside the bounds or have presented any additional or new impacts in this project. It is truly just trying to take an existing hotel that they, the, that unfortunately HRE failed to uh, appeal in its first instance and now taking advantage of the fact that we are seeking CUPs for alcohol and for uh, outdoor dining above the first level. Um, we are here today because uh, we believe that this project is appropriate for the area, that is certainly within the context of the area and how the CRA originally intended this area to have visitors serving. It is in the heart of Hollywood that is one of the highest concentration of visitor areas uh, in the city. Um, we have, rather than taking up the time and addressing each and every claim, uh, we had submitted a letter on uh, May 11th noting that there has been no new issues presented by the appellant since the, first, uh, the very first time. And as doing so, we have readdressed them all and rely on a uh, February letter as well that was submitted by our environmental consultant. Um, on the operational front, there are a few issues. We have been working uh, diligently with the community, with LAPD, and with the council office, and there are a few operational questions that are remaining. Um, and we do have, as long as we're here on appeal, there's some uh, cleanup to some conditions. Conditions 8B related to uh, electric vehicle parking, condition 8A related to a planter uh, that our plans show uh, as being within the public right of way uh, pursuant to revocable permit that the commission said needed to be on our property, but that pinches. Uh, the drive space, and since drive space is important, we're asking for that to be uh, changed. Uh, a condition related to the unclosed rooftop and how it's operated, which is 13C, and 16J uh, related to certain rage restrictions on alcohol control. The council office, uh, uh, council CD13 will be offering specific language relative to those changes uh, when they come up. Uh, so I'm not going to address those specific languages now, uh, that specific language now. Suffice it to say that we think this is an important project for Hollywood and we appreciate your support in denying the appeal and granting the revisions as requested. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. I also have Dana Sales as a representative. Do you wish to speak? No? Okay. Craig Bullock from the local, from the council district. Good afternoon, my name is Craig Bullock and I'm with Council Member Mitch O'Farrell's office. Today we were asking that you deny the appeal and amend a portion of the conditions imposed by the City Planning Commission. The um, conditions that we are looking to see amended is 6B and that would be to um, amend the determination to change the electric vehicle parking to 10%. We'd like an amendment to condition 8A which is to allow the fixed planter along Dalbyong Pre as in the public right of way. Condition 13C, which was the determination to allow guests and members of the public in the unenclosed areas of the rooftop patio, where it's only hotel guests are permitted under the conditions of the CPC, and to delete 16J of the determination that allows certain areas of the project. Um, we want to allow certain areas of the project to have age-restricted visitations depending on the visitors. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, uh, Mr. You, you've submitted this, and Craig, this is what you submitted? These are your amendments? Yes, I okay. can confirm that. Thank you. Okay, and uh, 
the uh, the applicant has also submitted some amendments. Are these they separate, for, different from these, or are they the same? Th they're consistent. Okay. With they're that. Co okay. Thank you. Right. Okay. Any questions or comments on this? All right. Given the testimony by the council district 13, uh, we'll move to approve in part and deny in part the appeals and adopt the modified conditions as circulated by Council District 13. Any objections? Seeing none, so ordered. Thank you. What's next on the agenda, Mr. Mejia? Uh, no further items, Councilman. Okay, we have public comment. Anybody sign up for public comment? I don't see that on my list. Okay, Noel Weiss. I'm sorry, wrong, wrong one. General public comment. April? April here? Okay. Claudia Castro? No. Okay. Ruby Rodriguez? Okay. Welcome. Thank you. My name is Ruby. I'm um, on behalf of ARMS. The former Virginia State Senator Virgil Gook was once quoted as saying, energy independence must rank along with the border security as the top priorities of the United States. We are aware as U.S. citizens that it is important for our nation to produce its own oil and gas. It keeps the costs at the pump low and limits the amount of financial support we give nations like Russia and South and Saudi Arabia. In Los Angeles County alone, the oil and gas industry represents over 100,000 jobs, and that's a significant number. In the time where there is a homelessness crisis threatening our city, we should be very careful not to eliminate good-paying, family-supportive jobs without being able to replace them in a foreseeable future. Ladies and gentlemen, I urge you to consider the influence your vote has on our economy and vote no on the 2,500-foot setback. Thank you and God bless. Speakers, did you guys sign up? Yeah. What, what, under what name did you sign up? General public comment. Yeah, but what was your name? Because I have no public comment here. For the record, my name is Dick Herman. That's what I signed up as. Okay. Do you have anything? No? Who the hell is okay. that guy there? He can't even read oh, the okay. goddamn computer. Right. Herman. No, he's so what is a public entity? A public entity is what I describe of what's happening for planning, called PLUM. We're not getting enough recognition for housing under HHH. Bitch, bitch, bitch. So I come to a conclusion why. Look at the chair, Mr. Jose Weizar, and I see no positive, constructive argument here that the man is dealing with emotions from home. Michelle Weezer isn't giving it up, and the chair is Sir, having issues. Sir, you are here to speak on items that pertain to land use and planning and, with respect to this city. And like if, I said, defined Herman, I'm by... I'm speaking to you. You have disrupted this meeting. If you continue on... Defined you're gonna, by Title II of the ADA, 42 U.S.C. 12131, a public entity shall not be immune time is to up. criticism Your and time prohibits is up. discriminations Thank you very much. against qualified Thank individuals. Thank you. Wayne. So as we see... The room has now been emptied out. Yes, the lady in the red jacket, she was making threatening looks all through the meeting, trying to say something stupid like, he's disrupting the meeting. No, no one disrupts the meeting. Only the bald-headed drunk chairman, Mr. Weezer. He disrupts the meeting. Also, Michelle, oh no, Richelle Rios, a.k.a. Richelle Weezer. Wayne, you have not... That is not on the agenda. Your yes, time is, is up. Thank you very much. Your no, time is it's up. Not on there. No, you are it's getting so off much topic. Does it have anything to do with land use and management? Stop. Your time is up. Thank you very much. Meetings is adjourned. Thank you.